In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Today's Chaplain Report is really not going to be a lengthy one. We're not going to get super philosophical, not going to be complicated because I believe this and I've always believed this. You let the scripture speak for itself. You don't have to editorialize much. You don't have to get complicated. And the actual content of this verse sort of plays to that idea. So we're going to go ahead and look at something that Jesus himself said in the Gospel of John. Chapter 8, verses 31 through 32. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So there's just a couple things that I wanted to point out about this verse specifically. First of all, one of the things that Jesus does is he connects truth to action. And Jesus was a teacher. That was a favorite title that people would use for him, and appropriately so. Rabbi, rabbinai, teacher, they all mean the same thing. Even people that don't believe in Jesus, that think he was a nutcase, that believed he was the Son of God, or believed that he wasn't the Son of God, they still believe that Jesus was a good teacher. That is a common title that is given to him. It's sort of the way that we think of him as being this amazing teacher and conveyor of truth. So when it comes to Christ, he is saying that there is an action tied with that. Because if you look at the first part of that verse, he says, to continue in my word, then you become disciples of mine, and you will know the truth. In other words, this is conditional language. To know the truth, you have to live out the word of Christ. Now, typically when we think of truth, and I think that there is some legitimacy to this, what we think of as truth is knowing things that are true. In other words, we know facts that are accurate, and thus we know truth. But a concept that Jesus conveys many times in his ministry is that knowing something is more than just having information. And this is something that may get a little bit lost in translation when we're looking at the English version of our Bibles. In Greek, to know something is a very intimate kind of relationship. In other words, when we know something, we, we know it, we experience it. It's kind of the difference between somebody knowing a, uh, the, the workings of a car and being able to do something with it. A great example of this, and it's a goofy analogy, but it works here. There's an episode of Big Bang Theory where, and just for those of you who aren't familiar with the show, it's about these four friends, and they're very nerdy. They, uh, you know, one's an engineer. Uh, there's a couple that are theoretical physicists, and those these are really, really smart guys. They have their car break down, and one of the friends asks, all right, who here knows anything about it? internal combustion engines? And they're all like, oh, yeah, we know about internal combustion engines. Like, okay, let me rephrase that. Who here knows how to fix an internal combustion engine? <laughs> Then they're like, no, no, no. It's the same principle. You see, to really know truth, to really know the truth of Christ, to understand that he is the Son of God and that his teachings are truth, we have to engage in them. It's a knowing in the sense that we understand it because we've lived it. We understand it because we've done it and seen that it works firsthand. It's not enough to just know the Scripture. That's important. That's a first step. You obviously have a harder time living it out if you don't know what the Scripture is saying. But the point is, when Christ talks about knowing the truth, what he means is living out the words and the commandments that he left us. It's not enough to just have information about Christ's life. There are people that are Bible scholars that don't believe that Christ was the Son of God and are not saved. They have knowledge about who Jesus was, they have knowledge about what he taught, but they aren't living it, and as such, they don't really know the truth in the sense that Christ was trying to convey it. 
And so it's really important for us as Christians to remember that the first step to knowing truth, and by extension, or some people would say it's, it's not even a different statement, because God is truth, the only way to know God is to follow his commandments and live by his word. We can know about God by knowing facts about him that we read from the scripture, but if we want to know God, have a relationship with him, be a, a child to the Father, there's only one way to do that, and that's obedience. And then what does Jesus do with that? He says, once you know the truth, it will set you free. And he goes on later in the same chapter to explain that it's a freedom from sin, it's, it's a freedom of this slavery to this burden of sin that mankind has. But before we get into all that, before we even look at that part, what Jesus explains here is knowing that truth, having that kind of relationship with God to where you live it and you work every single day to be obedient to his word, you start learning, hey, this stuff really does work. This isn't just a bunch of arbitrary rules that God came up with because he's God and he can do what he wants. He actually did this to help us. He actually made it a point to give us this information because he knows that having it makes us better people. It makes us happier. It gives us a sense of joy, not just temporary happiness. And when we live our lives by it, we're more pleasing to him, and we have a better life as a result. And the people around us, their lives are improved by that as well. You can only learn that, and you can only be convicted of that and really understand it once you've gone through the effort to transform your life and live by the teachings of Jesus Christ. It just goes way deeper than knowing a bunch of facts about him and moves to actually knowing him. It's the difference in reading somebody's biography or their obituary and having actually known them. That's the kind of difference that we're talking about. And once we really do have that knowledge, once we really do have that relationship with God, it sets us free. Free from the burden of sin and free from the burden of ourselves, of our own sinful natures. And we become the people that God always created us to be bearing that image of his son. That's what sets us free. Stay the course, friends. Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, Four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet, totally made up.